This, this is basically how I approach my trading. Let's say that we're going to trade the daily chart here. Now, oh, let's give you an overview of what we're going to do as well. So the book, the book is coming out at the end of the year. It's called Naked Forex, right? And I'm writing it with my broker. Now, the other thing that's important is that I like to trade the daily charts. This is how this session is going to be broken down this evening. The first session right now, what I want to talk about is uh, finding reversals. And we're talking about two reversals in particular, okay, and how to trade those, the rules for those, how we know if it's a good one or a bad one, and, and sort of, and you guys can ask questions along the way. In fact, I encourage it. Because if you are wondering, then there probably are other people that are wondering as well. The other thing that is going to happen is after the break, then we'll have a half hour break after the first 90 minute session, and then we'll, we'll continue onward. But in the second session, what we'll talk about are, um, very aggressive, high, high reward risk, um, entries. So we're gonna, in the first session, we'll talk about reversals, and in the second session, um, the premium session, we're going to talk about really ratcheting up your uh, reward to risk ratio for those people that you know find that really critical for their trading. So that's kind of how it's it's broken up. Okay. Now, hey FX Cast, how are you doing? Okay. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take a chart. And I'm going to show you exactly how I approach the um, the uh, the chart. This is basically what I do with with everything. Every every currency, every market, I do the same thing. So if I'm going to trade the daily chart here, I'm going to move one time frame up on my MetaTrader chart, and that's going to be the weekly chart, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in some zones here. Now, what is a zone? Does anyone um, – a zone is, a, is an area of support and resistance, right? So we like to see those spots on the chart where price has found both support and resistance. Hey, good day, Rami. How you doing? Nice to see you there. Good to see you, Rami. Um, this is how it works. We put zones just like this. And again, what I'm looking for, as you can see on the chart, are those spots on the chart where we have both support right, and resistance. So that you can see support right here, and then you can see resistance right there. right? So that's pretty clear. That's the type type of, of of zones that I like to see. The only exception would be those really um, those extreme levels on the chart. For example, this down here in October 2005, November 2005, right down here where price came down and touched it and then bounced back up. Now I don't really know if um, if 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 going back there is going to be also uh, resistance at this level. This is the 171 uh, 30 level right here. But if I go back, I'm, 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 pr I'm pretty confident that we would see that. And there you go right there. See what I'm talking about? This right here, this isn't, this is typical. Um, sometimes you'll hear people talk about support and resistance and they may say things like, oh, well, you know, just because that was support back in 1998, you know, things have changed now. Well, my, Minaj says, have you tried to get someone to design some software that could draw zone lines on a, on a MetaTrader 4 chart? Otherwise, it's time consuming. I totally agree, Minaj, and the answer to that is yes. Minaj, we can talk about that later, though. Um, um, Harley is asking, do you connect Wix or just bodies? Minaj, email me later, and we're going to talk about that because I actually have done that. Um, Harley says, do you connect Wix or just bodies? Okay, thanks, Minaj. Great question, Harley. Basically, what I like to do is I like, I guess the, the quick and dirty answer is both. <laughs> and that's not a cop-out, it's true. I'll show you actually what I consider to be even more important than um, Harley, than the wicks or the bodies of the candle. And I'll show you that in just a second, okay? Um, so let's go here. We've got one down here. So what I'm doing now is I'm just drawing in my weekly zones here, right? These are going to be very critical support areas of support and resistance. Now you're going to notice something here that sometimes price will 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 hit the zone and then pause and then blow right through it, right? And and the reason why that happens is because I consider um, 
I consider these zones like a big fat beer belly, right? So it's a beer belly in the sense that if I push into a beer belly, it may offer me some resistance, but I might be able to push into it a little bit, right? And likewise, if I push into a beer belly that's a little bit hairy and a little bit disgusting, I might actually just touch the hair and then retract my hand, right? So there, there, there are a number of different ways that price can approach these, these beer bellies. It might actually push into the zone before retreating, or it might just brush the zone and retreat. That's why I like to use dotted lines to remind myself that these aren't actually, you know, precise areas on the chart. They're more fuzzy zones, fuzzy beer bellies. So price can actually push into it. Like, look at these bars right here. This is back in 2004, and you can see the pound actually pushed into uh, this area right here several weeks, went about a month, five weeks actually, where it actually went a little bit beyond the zone and then it fell. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. And then what happened here was price came up, it touched the zone, right, right here, and it just kind of hit it spot on the zone and then fell, right? And then the next time it came up, it actually didn't quite make it to the zone and then it fell. So that's the kind of thing we're up against here when we're looking at zones is, you know, sometimes it's not that clear, right? Now, the other really cool trick when you're first starting to draw, and this gets to Harley's question about wicks or bodies, the other really cool trick you can use when you're looking at drawing zones on your chart is you can move to a line chart. And you can see right here, Harley says, I draw lines to get an idea, but they're never perfect. I totally agree, Harley. They, it's, it's so true. It's just not perfect. But what I what I... When I'm in an area like this, like where we're at right here, I know there's a zone somewhere in this area here, and I know it's probably somewhere around here, but it doesn't, it doesn't really make, it's not really that um, obvious. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go to a line chart, and I'm going to find my zone that way. Now, getting to Harley's question, now, now I can find that, look, I've got some touches here, I've got a touch there, I've got several touches from below, so resistance here, here, and here, right? Yeah, Charlie's saying that the markets are not perfect. That's right. The markets, the markets are a little bit sloppy at times. And so now I've got my zone here, right? I've got a really nice-looking zone based on the line chart. So what the line chart is is it's closing prices. So when, when uh, Harley asked the question, do you connect wicks or bodies, I found that um, regardless of whether or not it's a wick or a body, for me the closing price is really critical. I want to when it, when price gets sloppy and there's a lot of touches on either side of the zone, I want to make sure that I'm looking at the closing price.